Those whose lives were saved by an animal, what happened? If you like these stories, please like, subscribe, and comment for more content like this. The story's true. Happened around three to four years ago. I have a cat that is a mix between the Norwegian forest cat and a stray, so he's quite bigger than an average cat. While having a normal cat posture and look. So my mother was out with my little sister one day, just playing in front of their garden, and my cat's usually just free to do whatever the F he wants. So he was hanging around my little sister and she was playing with him. My parents usually let my cat go out each day for a few hours so he has time to do his cat things and explore, socialize with other cats and whatnot. Cat stuff. So that day while I went to get some car parts at Pultima my mother calls me and tells me to get to their place quick. She rang just as I was about to pay. So I paid and drove to their place in a decent speed. When I got home to my parents' place my little sister was in tears, mother was calming my little sister, which was around 6 to 7 at that time might add, and my cat was on the balcony. They have windows that go from the bottom to the ceiling so the cat can watch the outdoors, my cat looks pissed. Like proper pissed. His fur is all messed up and I can see that he's stressed as well since his tail is going wild, he's meowing with that signature deep meow that cats do when they're stressed or feel discomfort and he was pacing right and left looking out the window. So what my mother tells me is that while they were playing some old woman was walking with a dog without a leash, the dog was Rottweiler slash Golden Retriever size, bigger than my sister and cat combined. So out of the blue the dog starts charging and barking at my little sister, she's panicked, my mother's ready to put herself in the front and the cat just charges at the attacking dog. My little sister told me that she was more afraid of the fact what can happen to the cat. Nothing happened to him, his fur was just messed up a bit, no blood from my cat. So after my cat attacked the dog, the dog ran away. My cat stood next to my little sister all puffed up and the old woman apparently oblivious as to what had just happened started yelling at my mother and sister that we have a demon slash devil cat and that she will make sure that the cat will die. The dog had some scars but nothing that would cause major problems, just scratches. I guess it goes without saying that my parents didn't let my cat out for a while since the old woman decided to go full brain dead Facebook warrior and posted our address, stuff about us and lied on different Facebook groups about my cat being a vicious beast and terrorizing the city. Note. My cat was always positive to dogs, other people and other cats, after a while plenty of people decided to go for dog walks right in front of my parents' garden taunting the cat and my parents. So my little sister which loved playing in the garden ran home each time when there was a dog since she was terrified of them, thank you braindead old lady for making my sister afraid of dogs. And more people started coming and coming as in walking past my parents' garden and leaving dogs hit right in front of the gate. Just another true story that cats sometimes can be better defense pets than dogs. Cheers! Few months later when I'm out with my little sister showing her some parkour a random guy my age comes to us and asks if we have a cat that attacked the dog. I say yes and I tell him the story. Apparently it's his grandmother's dog and he apologized for her behavior and tells me that her dog has done some similar stuff in the past. I don't really remember it happening because I was four at the time. My parents told me our dog saved my life when we were on a family trip in the mountains, hiking up to a waterfall. I tripped and started to slide off the side of the path under the hand railing and our dog, a large Rottweiler grabbed me by my coat and pulled me back right before I would have fallen down a steep bank into a fast-moving river. That dog was my best friend growing up. I miss him. When I was a kid we had two golden retrievers. One lazy fall afternoon I was sitting in my backyard with my mom on my childhood swing set with Zach and Jazzy, dogs, talking when Zach started to get very emphatic about going for a walk or at least leaving the backyard quickly. We ignored them and continued to chat for a while but he got more and more agitated so eventually we figured we'd walk down the block with him. Well, we were about 50 yards away from my house when we heard a massive crack and a huge boom. Turns out one of the large trees in our backyard had died and in a giant branch had snapped and fallen. The branch completely destroyed the swing set. It would have crushed us if we hadn't gotten up. Always thought he must have known something was amiss because it was pretty out of character the way he was acting. My best friend, Dan, had adopted a shelter dog, Blocks. Blocks was an effing whack job, boundless energy, very hard to housebreak, a challenging dog altogether. Nevertheless, Dan wasn't the kind of guy to give up on a dog. So he kept trying to get Blocks to listen. Her name, Blocks was a she, was coined because she was dumb as Blocks, or so we thought. Blocks would consistently break out of the fenced-in yard by either jumping over a six-foot fence or digging holes underneath it. We filled the holes, added boards pointed in at the top of the fence to keep her in the yard. Nothing helped. Blocks was not going to be kept in a yard. Then eventually gave up on training her without a leash in the yard and put a stake in the ground for when he'd let Blocks outside. Blocks hated the leash, dug the stake up, and would drag it around the yard, destroying Dan's grass. Dan still didn't give up, because he's a resilient dude who loves animals more than people. And it's a goddamn good thing he didn't give up, or he'd be dead. One night, Dan's little brother was at Dan's house with a bunch of other people, myself included, for a party. Blocks was chilling, as long as people were around she was fine, she only really got anxious when she was alone. We partied well into the wee hours of the morning, I left around 3am to go home. Dan's brother stayed and crashed out in the basement. Dan's brother is a nice guy, but he's effing moron in the truest sense of the word. This moron lit a candle next to a bottle of shower cleaner, propellant, and a shower curtain, wick, and fell asleep with it lit. You see where this is going? Yeah, 
As his house was beginning to be swallowed in the roaring flames of the fire, Blox ran into Dan's room, jumped on the bed, and started barking in his face, over and over and over and over until Dan woke up from his boo-soaked slumber. Then actually pushed Blox off the bed twice from his recollection, but Blox was undeterred. She kept jumping back up on the bed, wasn't allowed on the bed, and barking in Dan's face. Finally, Dan's drunk ass got up and couldn't see his hand in front of his face. Crap, thought Dan, my effing house in on fire, and he ran outside, with Blox chasing him. But Blox wasn't done. Dan's moron brother was trapped in the basement, and remember how I said Blox was only calm if people were around? Well, Blox had some kind of doggy sixth sense, and she knew he was in trouble. She stood at the top of those stairs, flames singing her fur, smoke filling her lungs, barking nonstop so Dan's brother knew where the exit was. Every single person made it out alive. When the fire department came, one of the firemen took a liking to Blox. Since Dan was now effectively homeless, he agreed to let the guy look after Blox. Once Dan got back on his feet, he found the fireman to see about getting Blox back. So he headed over to the fireman's house and sure as ever there was Blox, happy, wagging, and sitting in a yard, unrestrained. Blox was now Bella, and she had three human kids who adored her. The fireman told Dan he could have his dog back, but Dan really is the kind of guy who loves animals more than people, even himself. He was crying when he got back in my truck that day. Optical delusions, for the first time ever I can say one of my rescues is in a better place, and actually mean it. When I was a kid, we had a huge blizzard. It was 96 and my house in Baltimore had an alley behind it that dipped in the middle. So all of the snow had piled back there, it was at least 4 to 6 feet in some places thanks to wind. I was a small kid, barely 40 pounds by the time I was 8 and a little over 3 foot tall. So I went out to play in the snow, thinking going through a big alley would be like swimming through a pool. I learned a hard lesson that day, you can't swim through snow. So I'm stuck about a half block down from my yard, no one in sight. I'm yelling and crying and my tears are freezing to my stupid 8 year old face. And then I see this awesome dog in a yard, he's barking at me, then barking towards his back door, this goes on for a few minutes and I'm still screaming. So dog jumps over the fence and I'm not entirely sure how he didn't immediately sink but he's licking my face, tapping me with his nose and starts pulling me by my hood when his owner finally comes out and pulls me out of the snow and takes me to my mom. I gave that dog so many treats until they moved. My horse, Sunny. We lived in a rural area in Canada. My parents weren't too strict, so I was allowed to go out into the pasture on my own from age 6 and up. One day while mindlessly walking my horse around he started to act up, which was very odd for him. He was extremely laid back. I still paid no attention, and kept leading him. Suddenly he knocks me over with his big head, ow, and takes off into the brush. When he emerges from the brush, he was also chasing a pack of mangy-looking coyotes. At least five of them, who looked hungry enough to take down me, at the time a small child. I watched him chase them away for a long time, then he deemed it was enough and came trotting back to me. Another time I fell off while riding him, stopped, looked at me like I was an idiot and waited for me to climb back on. Not me, but my mom. My mom has epilepsy. She had her first seizure when she was a teenager. We were always taught what to do in case she had one. Hers aren't extremely severe, but can be if she's left alone. When I was a kid, my parents bought us a dachshund. He was a nut job, but a good dog. About a year or two after we got him, he had his first seizure. My mom became so emotionally attached to him. She called him her buddy and felt a deep connection with him since they both suffered from the same thing. One day my dad dropped me off from basketball practice and had to run a few errands so he just let me out of the car. When I got out, he drove off and as I walked up to the door. I realized it was locked and felt that was a little weird. I always came home at the same time so my mom knows when I'll be back. I knocked a few times and didn't think she was home so I turned to walk away to my friend's house. This was early 2000s and I had no phone. Right before I do, I see our dog come running towards the door, slamming his whole body up against it and making the weirdest barking noises. He just kept doing it. I ended up breaking into my house to find my mom in the shower having an episode. She was fine and our dog actually lived to be 17. He was definitely my mom's little helper. For more stories like this, please like, subscribe slash follow and leave your comments in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.